One of the key figures that helped to make Donald Trump's political career, Jeff Zucker, has resigned as president from CNN. Now, as I'll get to, this is a horrible person. <laughs> like In terms of his approach to news, what he did as the head of CNN over nine years, how he helped to lift Trump and turn him into the Republican nominee, this is not someone that should be celebrated. And funny enough, conservatives are celebrating over him leaving CNN, yet he's the reason, he's one of the main reasons that Donald Trump became who Donald Trump eventually became. So first here, there's a lot to go through because this is, the reason he resigned to me is kind of weird. Uh, I don't think it, this really matters, at least it doesn't to me, but um from New York Times here, Jeff Zucker resigns from CNN after a relationship with top executive. The relationship came up during the network's investigation to the former anchor Chris Cuomo. Quote, I was required to disclose it when it began, but I didn't, Miss, Mr. Zucker wrote in a memo to colleagues. So he had this consensual relationship with a colleague, another top executive at CNN. I'll get some more on that in a minute. First, let me show you just a quick reaction here when CNN announced this news. Kate, we both know uh, he, uh, Jeff Zucker has been the rock for this organization. The last few days, he has not been on the morning editorial calls. Uh, some people even noticed and wondered uh, if something was amiss. I don't think anybody uh, saw this coming this morning, an announcement like this. But I think if Zucker was on that call this morning, I know what he'd say. He'd say what's important at CNN is not the person at the top, it's the, the team we all play for. It's CNN as an organization. This news operation so much bigger than any single person. And so the news goes on, but now without the top executive. They're mourning him like he died. <laughs> he didn't die. He resigned. He's fine. He's in good health. He resigned. He's incredibly wealthy. He'll be just fine. But you can see there, Brian Stelter, CNN's top media critic, appears to have no issue with their former president, of course, because I'm sure that's why Stelter is there. But any any other media critic who was not hired by Zucker would be able to recognize that Zucker was, I would say, the number one reason Trump became the presidential uh, or became the Republican nominee and eventually president. So you may say, oh, but Roger Ailes, Fox News. Yeah, that played a piece. But you expect Fox News to lift up, you know, a lunatic. You don't, at least traditionally, most people would not expect that from CNN. But that's exactly what CNN did. So there's a great piece here from 2017. If you have the time to read through it, it is incredibly long. Um, I haven't even finished the whole thing, <laughs> but I will link to it below the video if you want to read through it. But this gives you a real window into the relationship between Zucker and Trump. So it was Zucker who, as president of NBC Entertainment, broadcast The Apprentice at a time when Trump was little more than an overextended real estate promoter with a failing casino business. That show, more than anything, reversed Trump's fortunes, recasting a local tabloid villain as the people's primetime billionaire. And it was Zucker who, as president of CNN, broadcast the procession of made-for-TV events, the always newsmaking interviews, the rallies, debates, the major policy addresses, quote-unquote, that never really were, that helped turn Trump into the Republican frontrunner at a time when few others took his candidacy seriously. CNN, and in particular Jeff Zucker, helped to turn Trump into someone to listen to. They help to normalize Donald Trump. That's why I think their impact on Trump becoming president is a lot greater than Fox News because CNN helped to make this guy a household name and someone to take seriously because they constantly broadcast his crap and always had people on defending him. Yes, they criticized him, but they always had people on defending his lunacy. And again, that's Jeff Zucker's doing. And I'll get to more, a little more on that uh, later. And just an incredible quote that really summarizes everything I have said about what is wrong with cable news. But a little more here. This Remember this? Back in 20, uh, 2016, they broadcast Donald Trump's empty podium over Bernie Sanders giving a speech. So this is after one of the states. They decided, you know what? Who cares about Bernie Sanders and his policy and how he wants to help people? Let's broadcast this empty podium standing by for Trump to speak instead of actually showing Bernie Sanders while he was giving a speech. Again, shows you what Jeff Zucker and CNN valued at the time and still until uh, today. But a little more here. So getting back into why Zucker left. 
Quote, as part of the investigation into Chris Cuomo's tenure at CNN, I was asked about a consensual, this is Zucker speaking, consensual relationship with my closest colleague, someone I have worked with for more than 20 years. I acknowledge that the relationship evolved in recent years. I was required to disclose it when it began, but I didn't. I was wrong. Jeff Zucker had a consensual relationship. I'll get to more in it here. A consensual relationship with another top executive. Someone he knew for 20 years. They recently got involved during COVID. And because he didn't disclose it earlier, that's why he had to leave. <laughs> it's so weird to me. Out of everything that Zucker has done, his actual negative impact on society, that doesn't matter. What matters is that he didn't disclose a relationship with another top executive earlier. They're both divorced. They weren't cheating on any, anybody. They're just normal relationship. That's why he had to leave. <laughs> so very weird. A little more here from uh, the New York Times piece. Ms. Golist, who was the woman that Zucker had a relationship with, said in a statement on Wednesday that she was remaining in her role at CNN. Quote, Jeff and I have been close friends and professional partners for over 20 years, she wrote. Recently, our relationship changed during COVID. I regret that we didn't disclose it at the right time. I'm incredibly proud of my time at CNN and look forward to continuing the great work we do every day. Both Mr. Zucker and Ms. Golst are divorced. Now, before I get to the Cuomo part angle of this, which is largely likely why uh, Zucker here had to resign, the only people really impacted by this kind of relationship are other top executives. <laughs> so, you know, I guess potential for favoritism in that sense. So really, it's only when you offend other top executives, other, you know, multimillionaires is when you're forced to resign over a very benign situation like this. But a little more here. So the Cuomo piece is, I think, the major piece here. Political reporter shortly after Zucker's announcement, two sources with knowledge of the situation not authorized to speak publicly, said that Cuomo's legal team, which continues to negotiate his exit from the network, raised issues about the relationship between Zucker and Golst. Quote, Cuomo's legal team asserted that Zucker was hypocritical to suggest Cuomo had a personal conflict of interest when the relationship with Golst represented a potential conflict as well, Politico added. But this is so stupid. Cuomo's, his um, conflict of interest here was with his brother. His brother, on air, his brother, the governor of New York, Cuomo praising him during COVID when his brother was doing a terrible job, which came out later on. Cuomo never apologized for that, never corrected the record on that. That was the issue with that conflict of interest. A couple of executives having a relationship, a consensual one, and they're both divorced. Like, who... Who cares? That has no impact at all on actual viewers, on society. Cuomo praising his governor brother during a pandemic does. But still, like, again, I don't care. I'm glad Zucker's gone. But like the reasoning here is so completely bizarre. But it shows you when you offend other top people in the business, other executives, other multimillionaires, that's when you have to resign over a situation like this. Now, a little more so conservative Twitter is apparently delighting in Jeff Zucker's demise. Even though Jeff Zucker made Donald Trump, <laughs> turned him into the Republican nominee and eventually president. But they're on Twitter here, uh, you know, having a field day over this. It's so weird to me. You know, again, absolutely no history, no knowledge. Nothing enters the brains of these people. They don't care. This is like their number one ally. <laughs> but they don't they don't seem to care. So whatever. Uh, now, a little more on this piece, as, as I mentioned earlier from 2017, this is the headline of that piece. CNN had a problem. Donald Trump solved it inside the strange symbiosis between Jeff Zucker and the president he helped create. So Parker Malloy here on Twitter took out some choice quotes. I'm going to read a bit of this. It really is. It, it's not just about Trump. It's about Zucker's entire approach to news that is absolutely disgusting. And again, one of the main reasons why people today don't know what the hell is actually going on. So first this, as Zucker sees it, his pro-Trump panelists are not just spokespeople for a worldview. They are characters in a drama, members of CNN's extended ensemble cast. Quote, everybody says, oh, I can't believe you hate Jeffrey or you have Jeffrey Lord or Kaylee McEnany. But you know what? Zucker told me with some satisfaction, they know who Jeffrey Lord and Kaylee McEnany are. This is everything wrong with news. He's looking, he looked at news as an HBO drama, as characters in a play. 
instead of actually how politics impacts the lives of real people. How money plays a big piece of that, the corrupting influence of money in politics. The CNN largely completely ignores that. Completely ignores the actual impact of policy, what Medicare for all would mean for the working class. Maybe make that a topic of conversation. No. Looking at these characters or these people as, as characters in a play, you have the Republican defenders over here, the Democratic defenders over here, and they're going to fight it out and battle it out like it's a HBO drama. Just completely disgusting. And it also goes to the sports mindset of news coverage as well, which also Zucker loved, as I'll get to. But a little more here. Just I'll, re I'll just read these, some of these quickly, so some of the highlighted pieces. I like Donald, Zucker told me, before quickly correcting himself. I guess I shouldn't call him that. I like President Trump. He's affable. He's funny. He paused, searching for another adjective. He's good company, I suggested. He's good company, Zucker agreed. This is 2017. Trump had already put out his bigoted, racist remarks, you know, several of them, uh, during that run. And this is how Zucker felt about him. Some others here. One of those who lobbied on his behalf was Trump. He sang Zucker's praises to Turner Broadcasting Systems chief executive at the time, Phil Kent, uh, who was in charge of hiring for the position. So Trump helped to sell CNN on hiring Zucker as president. <laughs> Again, to give you an idea of the relationship between these two individuals. Zucker and Trump spoke every month or so during the Republican primaries. They both just helped to enrich themselves, ultimately is what happened. Another one here. So as Parker Malloy comments, CNN made hires based on Trump's recommendations. So Jeff Zucker has undeniably made the world a worse place. One example of that here, the network asked Trump to suggest the names of some people who would defend him. One of those whom he mentioned was Jeffrey Lord. Remember Jeffrey Lord? Big Trump defender back in the day. CNN hired him because Trump recommended him. <laughs> uh, another... Last quote here. This is this one really drives me crazy. Zucker is a big sports fan, and from the early days of the campaign, he had spoken at editorial meetings about wanting to incorporate elements of ESPN's programming into CNN's election coverage. Quote, the idea that politics is sport is undeniable, and we understood that and approached it that way, he told me. Looking at politics as sport is one of the biggest issues with cable news today. Treating it as this side says this, this side says this, let's watch them battle it out, as opposed to looking at the actual policies, the issues, how it's impacting the working class. Your job as a journalist, as somebody in news, is to represent the vast majority of voices and speak against the powerful. Instead of doing that, Jeff Zucker looked at politics as a sport, looked at it as a daytime drama. And we see the impact of that over the last nine years. An absolutely horrible person not because of his consensual relationship at work, but because of his actual impact on society through news coverage. Last thing here, just to give you a little update on what is going on at CNN right now. They have announced their interim co-heads following his resignation. So they have, I guess, three people here that are currently in charge while they find a replacement for Jeff Zucker. So there you go. I'm sure nothing will fundamentally change at CNN. They'll likely just use the same formula Zucker already set out and the impact on society at large over the past nine years is undeniable.